Hey, so if you've ever thought to yourself, I wish I could just have a spreadsheet where I could click a button and get the most optimum design shape. Well, guess what? This video is going to show you how to do that, right? It's going to eliminate all these Z tables. We have to go find ZX and go look something up in a manual. It's what it's going to do is allow you to literally punch in a number for your de design moment and optimize it so you get the most optimal shape. So, hey, thanks for coming along. Let's get going. So to get started, I've gone ahead and downloaded the AIC Shapes database, and this is great because what it gives us is all of the the shapes that are in the AIC database. And what we're going to do is try and optimize this. So the first thing that I'm going to do after that is I'm just going to create two sheets. The first sheet I'm going to call Sorted Shapes, and the second sheet I'm going to call Optimize. Okay, and basically what we're doing is we're creating places where we're going to do our work. So in the optimize sheet, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have an input like if I have our demand uh, moment, for example, of MU, right? And I could say that's 100 kip feet, right? Whatever you want it to be, that's, you know, it is what it is. It's going to change. But what we're going to do next is we want to calculate the moment capacity, right? Capacity, right? So we want to calculate the moment capacity. And what we need for that is we need a shape. Right, I'm going to leave a space here. We're, we're going to need a ZX, and we're also going to need, I think, phi. Right, so phi. If if we assume the unbraced length is zero, so I'm going to just say four LB equals zero. This is right. This is just yielding, and basically, we're not going to worry about lateral torsional buckling. We're not going to worry about flange local buckling and other effects. But in order to do this, what we know is our phi MN value is just going to be well it's going to be i need fy in here also so it's going to be what it's going to be equal to phi times fy times zx and as you would expect that equals zero okay but what what else do we have this is going to be inches to the three phi is going to be unitless and fy is going to be ksi and if you'll notice my feet if i want to get if i actually my units here if i want to get kip feet i'm going to need to take this and divide it by 12 because the that equation will give me kip inches right and i could put in any value here i could say you know 0 0.9 which is good going to be phi i could put in any value of of zx right i could say 50 inches and i could say 50 here and i get some value right and what this does is it gives me you know i could go play with this but what we ultimately want is to be able to look up a shape have it return the z value and automatically calculate our, our capacity, right? Because what's our capacity? Our capacity ratio is basically just going to be what's the, the, the demand to capacity, right? Capacity. And what's that going to be? That's kind of like our, actually, let me stick this up here. This is kind of like what we call a unity value. So all this is going to be is I'm just going to say my demand to capacity ratio is going to be what? My 100 divided by 93.75 so what we want to do now now is just basically create something where we can cycle through all the shapes and figure out which z value is the best okay or, or is the most efficient or which shape is the most efficient okay so i need to do a couple other things first i need to do a lookup so that i can look up my shape and return z Okay, so to do that, I'm going to uh, go through this kind of quickly. If you want more information on how to look up shapes, you, there's another video that I'll reference that you can take a look at. But I'm just going to create an ID column and label these one, two, three, you know, and just populate that all the way down. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to literally just control shift down, call this my ID column. Okay, and then I'm going to come to my manual label column. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to say manual underscore label. So I'm just making arrays now and I'm naming them. And, and then I also want to come over to Z. ZX is going to be way over here. And finally I get there and I'm going to control shift down and call this ZX. Okay. So those are our, our, the, our, the major lookups that we need. If you need to do more lookups, you can do that. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to go and I'm going to 
and I'm going to copy this this whole column here, this D column. Okay, I'm going to copy the manual label. I'm just going to Control C, and I'm going to come over to my short sorted shapes sheet and just paste that in. And then similarly, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go to my area column. You can use area, you can use weight, but what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to come up with uh, essentially a list of all the shapes that are sorted based on the least weight to the greatest weight. Because what we're going to do is when we come back to our optimized sheet is we're going to run through every shape from the least weight to the greatest weight until we get one that works, until we get one where unity is one or less. Okay, so what we need here is to create that sorted list. And what I'm going to say here is uh, basically I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to uh, my, my data tab here and under that what I can do is I can click on a sort and I can do a custom sort I can say you know I want to sort the A column and it's gonna go from smallest to largest so actually I made a mistake what I needed to do first was I'm gonna undo that um, what I need to do first is just we're just gonna be looking at W shapes so I need to come down here until I'm done with my W shapes and get rid of all the rest okay so this is just gonna be my W shapes and I can call this something else you know W shapes right but now again what I want to do is I want to sort that from uh, essentially smallest area to biggest area so now this gives me the smallest W shape the least weight W shape is W6 by 8.5 and as you can see that the weights go up as the areas go up okay so this is my sorted shapes and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a range here and I'm gonna call this range I'm just gonna call this you know sorted underscore shapes okay so now we have some different uh, some different values some different different ranges that we've created but ultimately what I want to do is I want to take this shape and this is going to be you know an input cell so I'm gonna create this and just call it an input cell similarly I may mu is gonna be an input cell I could make phi and fy input cells as well and what we're going to do here is this is going to be uh, uh, picked from a list. So to do that, I'm going to come to my data. I'm going to go to data validation. And in data validation, instead of any value, I'm going to do a list. And the list that I'm going to use is that range we just made. So I'm going to say this equals sorted underscore shapes. Right? And when I do that, now you see this little drop down arrow. And this references that list of W6 by 8.5 all the way up to a W44 by, well, actually that's not the biggest, a W36 by 925, almost a thousand pounds per foot. It's a big beam, okay? So what do we have? That's our shape, right? So I can pick this shape, and what I wanna have happen is to return the Z value for that. So I'm gonna put one other, uh, one other uh, feature in here, and that's gonna be ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say equal match, and this is, you know, again, there's a video that goes over this in more detail, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match this value right and actually before I go anywhere I'm just gonna name this I'm gonna name this my shape okay so I'm gonna say I want this to equal actually equal match I'm gonna use a match formula here and this is what this formula does it returns a relative position of an item in an array okay so this is gonna match this in our manual label column Okay, remember that range we made? And what I want is zero here for an exact match, right? So I want an exact match. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell us where that W10 by 12 is in the ID column of the database, right? So the database shape here is this is our, this is our you know, manual label. And what I'm gonna do is if I come down to 260, so if I go to 260, there it is. There's my W10 by 12. This is, this is key because what this allows us to do now is to reference any value in this table because now we know the row that it's in. So if I come back to my optimized sheet, what I'm gonna do is just a simple lookup function to say look up this ID value in my ID. Remember we created the ID array as well? And what I want to do is the result vector is going to be my ZX value, right? So this is going to look up that ID value in the ID array and return the corresponding value in the ZX column, right? So if we go back to that to double check, let's look. If we come over, I went a little too far. Let's come back and see. If we go all the way over to ZX, there it is, 12.6. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We're able to look it up. We're able to get this, but our unity is still greater than one. 
So now this comes the part of coding. And if you haven't coded before, don't worry, I'll put some, some code, some Visual Basic code down below to show you what we're going to do. But we're going to use those named ranges. Basically, again, what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through from the smallest shape all the way to the biggest shape until we get a value that works, right? So, in order to access your, uh, your, your macro center, the first thing that you probably want to do is to save this as. And when we save it, I'm just going to put it on the desktop here. But what you want to save it as is a macro enabled workbook. Okay, so I, I was playing with this earlier, and I'm just going to call this optimize.xlsm. Okay, but this is a macro worksheet that you need to save. Okay, is it a macro enabled workbook? So I'm going to save that. You don't have one already, but that's okay. So this is where it is. And you'll notice when we do that, this ribbon shows up. It's a developer ribbon. And here, this allows us access to the Visual Basic, uh, the Visual Basic platform. Okay, or Visual Basic window coding window. So what we can do now is in this sheet, right? So in this workbook, what we want to do is we want to add a module. And this module is going to be where we actually run our, our macro. So this macro is what we need to use, and I'm just going to call it sub uh, optimize. So, so sub is, is what you use to basically create a function. Okay, so uh, Visual Basic automatically puts in the end sub there. The first thing that we need to do is we need to initialize uh, variables. Okay, in anytime I put this little tick in front of a, a, a text string, that's just going to make this a comment. You can kind of see it shows up as green. Okay, the 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 variables that we're going to use are going to be called. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to look up this unity value here. Okay, I'm going to call that unity. And what I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say double. Double is just a a number format and it, 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 that's based on how many uh, bytes are recorded. Uh, the other one that I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my sorted underscore shapes range as a range. Okay, right, so that was my array of the sorted shapes. That goes from the smallest shape to the biggest shape. And then what I'm going to do is now I want to bring this into my Visual Basic. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to set sorted shapes, right, equal to and this is where you have to go so this is gonna be the worksheets and what worksheet was that in that was in my work worksheets sorted shapes so I need to put parentheses here or not parentheses uh, what I need to put here are quotation marks sorted space shapes I didn't put an underscore on the uh, worksheet right and then what I need to say is dot range so this references that sorted underscore shapes range in the sorted shapes sheet that's almost a tongue twister okay so those that kind of in initializes all the variables and it also it also sets in visual basic right it sets in visual basic this variable invisible visual basic what this you know what this range is because visual basic doesn't automatically reference all the ranges in your spreadsheet you have to explicitly define those okay so next what we're going to do is we're just going to run a loop for each shape until the unity value is acceptable and I'll go back and fix my spelling unity value is acceptable so this is just going to be a for loop so what we're going to say is for each i'm just going to use a dummy variable here but for each c in my sorted shapes array okay what i want to do next is i'm going to uh, just i'm commenting this so you can see i want to assign the next shape in the sorted list so to do that i need to spell things correctly but I want to assign the next shape in the sorted list to the spreadsheet right so basically what I need to do here is I need to make this shape the next shape in the list so what I'm gonna say here is I'm gonna say now I'm gonna assign the worksheets and specifically the optimize sheet and remember we named that range we named it I believe shape Right. What we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to name. We're going to take that that this references the the shape 
in the worksheet what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign that to essentially the next C dot value so this is the next value in sorted shapes so see it goes from you know one all the way up to however many shapes there are in that list and this is just gonna pull the next one so it's gonna start with the first one and keep going keep going keep going as we go run through this for loop okay but then what we want to do is once we pull that in right so I could come back over here and I say okay I'm gonna start here and I'm going to pull up my W6 by 8 by 0.5. Right? What do I want to see? Well, this unity value is no good. It's greater than 1, so it's no good. So what do we want to do? We want to check that. So now I'm just going to assign my unity value in Visual Basic equal to that worksheets optimize unity. Okay, so I'm going to assign that in Visual Basic now. The unity it gets this 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 from the worksheet. So again, where you have these worksheets in range, that's referencing the actual worksheet, where you have this just unity value that's in Visual Basic. And you can see this is that, well, I need to define it. I haven't defined it yet. I'm going to call this one Unity. Okay, so I'm going to call this one Unity, and that's my Unity sheet. So, you know, this is my shape, you know, my shape, this is Unity. And all it's doing now is it's going through, and it's, it's, assigning a shape and it's checking unity right but to check unity I need to do an if statement so what I'm going to say here is if unity is less than or equal to one then what do we want to do well if it's less than or equal to one then it's good it works right and then what we want to do is we actually want to exit the for loop right so this basically exits the loop if the unity is acceptable right and other and then you know we also need to tell visual basic to end the if statement okay so basically if when this stops right when when the one their unity stops being bigger than one this will stop so that's what we're saying with the if statement and then what we're going to do here is, is uh, after all that if it if it doesn't if it doesn't stop if it's still bigger than one we're going to go to our next c value right and then that ends the sub so in if we've done everything right this should work so now you say okay well how do we actually run that well one of the ways I like to do it is I mean you can go to this macro function and just run it okay and we can see if it works and look at that all of a sudden we get the most efficient W shape that's gonna resist 100 kips and now we can come in here we can change this we can come to our macro we can run it and get a new value so this eliminates needing to go look up Z Z values and, and Z tables and all that sort of thing one of the things that I like to do is I like to come back and just insert like a button right so the last step here might be to do something like this where we insert a button and say optimize right so we call this optimize the optimize button okay and I can make the text a little bit bigger but essentially all that we're doing here is we're creating a button and then I'm gonna right click on the button and I'm going to assign a macro and this macro is what we assign so now every time we put in a new number here and we click our optimize button that's gonna give us the most efficient shape so I hope this helps you as, as you start learning how to build spreadsheets into, I hope this helps you create more efficient spreadsheets, spreadsheets that are useful for you. All right. So again, this is just for LB equals to zero. If you want to get more crazy or crazier, you can kind of go through and insert different, you know, equations here to get VMN when LB doesn't equal zero. But for just yielding, this spreadsheet will now eliminate having to go look up values in Z tables and will give you the most optimum shape for any moment value. So if you have comments, definitely leave them below. I'm not a coding expert, so if you have you know improvements on the code, improvements for ways to do it, leave comments below. We would love to hear from you. But if you're sort of like me, just an engineer trying to get things done in an optimal way, hopefully this gives you another tool in your bag. Alright, so until next time, keep keep working hard and keep moving onward and upward.